This is an impossible burger. It tastes like meat and bleeds like meat, but it's actually made out of plants. Meat consumers, when they hear about it, they think it's gonna suck, okay? They think this is gonna be just like every other veggie burger, a, a sad attempt at, you know, replicating this unbelievably delicious burger that I love. And those consumers are the ones Impossible Foods is targeting with its beef, pork, and sausage, made primarily out of water, soy protein, coconut oil, sunflower oil, and natural flavors. The only consumer we care about is, is an omnivore, a meat consumer. Please, vegans and vegetarians, if you like your veggie burger, keep eating it. That's because Impossible Foods wants to replace the estimated $1.4 trillion global animal meat industry to reduce the climate change impacts of animal agriculture. Plant-based products are going to completely replace the animal-based products in the food world within the next 15 years. That's our mission. But America loves its beef, pork, and chicken. And the meat industry isn't backing down without a fight against so-called fake meat. To fend off the naysayers, Impossible Foods figured out how to make a plant-based burger sexy. From the way it smells, the way it cooks, the way it looks when it's done cooking, even the way it looks before you cook it. I would describe the flavor of Impossible as the closest to meat that I've ever tasted. Yeah. The company created buzz for its meatless burgers by courting meat-loving celebrity chefs and recognition from the tech community. Demand for the burger exploded in 2019, leading to a highly publicized shortage at restaurants. Even celebrities pitched in to help Impossible Foods scale up its manufacturing capabilities in order to meet growing demand. Since 2011, the private company has raised $1.3 billion at a valuation of about $4 billion. Here's how Impossible Foods turned a plant-based burger into a foodie sensation. This is suddenly obsessed. Impossible Foods was founded in 2011 by Pat Brown, a Stanford Medical School professor who loved his job and had no interest in pursuing business. But he wanted to help solve climate change by focusing on animal agriculture, a leading source of greenhouse gas emissions and biodiversity loss. Brown quickly realized the problem wasn't going to be fixed by regulating the livestock industry or persuading people they should eat less meat. All those things have been tried multiple times. They've never even come close to success. Even most of the environmentalists that go to climate and environmental conferences are eating steak for dinner. The only way to solve the problem is to accept the fact that people who love meat and dairy foods and fish, they're not going to change their diet. They're not going to stop eating foods that are a big source of pleasure in their daily lives. The way to solve the problem is to figure out a better way of giving consumers these foods that they're going to keep wanting, do a better job of delivering it than the current industry does, compete in the marketplace, and pull the economic rug out from under that industry. In 2011, Impossible Foods raised about $9 million in its initial funding round. Brown hired mostly scientists to try and figure out on a molecular level what makes meat so delicious. The answer, heme, a protein essential to all living cells. The iron-containing molecule that makes meat red but is also responsible for the bloody taste of raw meat and the incredibly intense flavor of cooked meat. To produce heme in massive quantities, the company extracts DNA from soy plants, which have an abundance of heme. That DNA is inserted into genetically modified yeast, which is fermented to produce lots of heme. The company debuted the Impossible Burger in 2016. The Impossible Burger 2.0 followed in early 2019. Impossible Sausage hit the market in 2020. The company wanted to start with a beef alternative, since cows are the most harmful type of livestock for the environment. According to the UN, the cattle industry alone accounts for nearly 9% of global human-caused emissions. 
especially considering cows expel an estimated 160 to 320 liters of methane per day. Brown says replacing one pound of beef with impossible reduces your greenhouse gas footprint by the equivalent of driving 36 miles in an average American car. You save water that is equivalent to the average daily household water consumption in the U.S. You free up a land area that's sufficient to support one and a half new trees. But that currently comes at a cost. One pound of Impossible Meat is priced at about $10 to $12, depending on where you buy it. While one pound of ground beef costs on average just $4 to $6. While experts say Impossible Meat is undoubtedly better for the environment, it's not necessarily considered healthy. What it replaces is a burger made from a cow, not a kale salad. Impossible meat is comparable to 80% lean, 20% fat ground beef, the most popular lean to fat ratio when it comes to protein and calories. But Impossible meat has less fat, no cholesterol, no antibiotics or hormones, and is higher in certain vitamins and minerals. But Impossible also has about five times more sodium and is heavily processed, though not all processed foods are unhealthy. So the Impossible Burger is better for the environment and comparable to beef for your health. But does it taste just as good as meat? I asked my boss, Nate, who's a legitimate beef connoisseur. I got choice 80-20 ground beef that is sold in every single grocery store. And what did it cost? Six bucks for two pounds. Mm, this is actually really good, I have to say. It's very good. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. This is not as good as a regular burger. I think the other one just had a little, had more of that meaty heartiness, that savoriness that people love about meat. I can definitely see how dressed up like a Whopper, you couldn't tell the difference. But meat and bread, it doesn't, it doesn't compare. Okay, so if you're in a restaurant and you have Impossible and beef available and they're the same price, what are you gonna go for? Beef. Really? Every time. I eat meat, but I would take this because I'm really motivated yeah. to want to eat less meat, you know? And some people aren't. It's people like my boss, Nate, and myself who Impossible Foods is targeting with its plant-based meat. People who eat meat and don't want to stop or can't stop because it's just good. All the plant-based products combined have a fraction of a fraction of the market share of the animal-based product. There's just no upside to trying to compete against each other for that tiny share of market. All the growth is in the omnivore market. In the U.S., plant-based meat sales amounted to $622.6 million in 2019. That's compared to $61.4 billion in traditional meat sales in the same period. Impossible's top competitor, Beyond Meat, which went public in 2019, brought in about $298 million in net revenue globally that year, more than triple the year before. Projections about how fast the global plant-based meat market could grow vary a lot, to $85 billion by 2030 on the high end, to a more conservative estimate of about $8 billion by 2026. That's still a fraction of traditional meat sales today. Barclays pegs the global meat industry at $1.4 trillion, a number expected to multiply as the world population grows and incomes rise in developing countries. Brown says only about 10% of the U.S. population of 330 million has even tried an impossible burger. The other 90% is in this category of people who think, it's just another crappy veggie burger, why would I want to try it and so forth. The biggest challenge right now is figuring out how to effectively in a credible way communicate to meat lovers that you should try this. Impossible Foods planned its initial rollout to drum up buzz with its target audience. Instead of debuting in grocery stores, the Impossible Burger launched in a handful of high-end, buzzed-about restaurants. Helmed by meat-loving celebrity chefs like Tracy Desjardins, Chris Cosentino, and Netflix star David Chang. 
Chang was the first to introduce the impossible burger at his restaurant, Momofuku Nishi, to lines around the block. So this guy is a meat guy to the bone, the perfect person for us to launch with. After all, Chang once famously removed nearly all the vegetarian options at one of his restaurants to make a point about refusing to give in to vegetarian trends. The most important message we need to send to consumers is that uncompromisingly delicious meat that can satisfy hardcore people like these chefs doesn't have to come from animals anymore. For the first couple of years, it was super hard to get an impossible burger. And so I think that was, that was certainly by design because that's how marketing works, but that was also just what they had the capacity to do. Ultimately, the Impossible Burger's launch was much better for publicity than it was for the company's bottom line. That made a splash that was way out of proportion to how much we sold. But that was all part of the plan. Impossible Foods took to the market with a strategy that has worked for other buzzworthy brands like Tesla and Oatly. Make a premium product that is hard to get exclusive and desirable to build brand cachet and recognition. Then create an affordable version for the mass market and try to become a household name. In early 2019, a new product rollout and spike in publicity pushed the company to go mainstream. The Impossible Burger 2.0 debuted at one of the most buzzworthy events in tech, the Consumer Electronics Show in January 2019, with improvements in flavor, texture, nutrition, and appearance. The burger won numerous CES awards, generating a crush of consumer interest. And it was such a big growth moment, the demand over a very short period of time outstripped our ability to supply it. Amid a highly publicized shortage, Impossible Foods scrambled to scale up its manufacturing. The company began operating its Oakland, California plant 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and even contracted with major meat manufacturer OSI Group, a longtime supplier of McDonald's. In 2019, Impossible Foods raised another $300 million to ramp up production from the likes of Google Ventures, Bill Gates, and a slew of entertainment celebrities. Today, Impossible Meats are sold in 30,000 food service locations and 9,000 food retailers. But Impossible Foods is still a long way off from its goal. We made our, our mission to completely replace animals in the food system by 2035. The pig and the cow are not working on getting more delicious. Impossible Foods is working every day, working hard every day to make our, our products more delicious. But the beef industry isn't backing down without a fight. A growing number of states are passing legislation pushed by cattle industry groups that bar companies from representing products as meat if they don't come from an animal. The largest meat companies in the world have also jumped on the bandwagon and launched their own plant-based meat products. As Impossible Foods achieves more economies of scale, prices will come down. But to reach its goal and win over the hardcore meat lovers, Impossible Foods will have to convince them its plant-based meat tastes just as good, if not better.